So there's a few different things that we're gonna go over in this video. So first of all, what is an oil cooler? Do you actually need one? And finally, how to actually install an oil cooler if you think you need one. So that's what we're gonna go over here. So motor oil, believe it or not, actually has five different functions in an engine. I'll list them over here on the side. And one of the, one of the things that people kind of forget about when it comes to motor oil is one of the main functions of motor oil is actually cooling. Motor oil is taxed with the job of cooling, obviously all the engine bearings, the rod bearings, the bottom of the pistons, um, even the piston rings, things like that. Basically the entire bottom of the engine is cooled by motor oil. So when you start dealing with vehicles that tow a lot or performance vehicles, they typically come with some sort of oil cooler from the factory to keep the oil and the bottom of the engine from essentially overheating and causing damage. Most of the time, the type of oil cooler that they use in those applications is usually an air to water oil cooler. And the way those work is they take the hot oil from the engine and they run it across a heat exchanger that has incoming cold coolant from the radiator. So right before the, the coolant goes into the engine block to get heated back up, it runs through this oil cooler. So some of that heat from the oil gets transferred into the coolant and then the coolant goes on into the engine. So as you would imagine, it's very hard on the cooling system of the vehicle because the stock radiator is essentially taxed with doing the job of oil cooling and cooling the engine. If your vehicle doesn't have an oil cooler on it, the only way that the, that the oil gets cooled is literally just sitting in the bottom of the pan, radiating heat out into the atmosphere through the pan. Does every car out there need an aftermarket oil cooler installed? Absolutely not, but there's certain people out there that you know add turbos, take their car to the track, basically abuse their car, and the car from the factory was never designed to cope with that amount of heat and that amount of stress. So in that situation, that is when you want to install an oil cooler. Um, this particular Mustang is going to see some track time. And that is why I went through, um, you know, the hoops that we kind of are going to jump through in this video as far as installing this oil cooler. Um, I'll, I'll give you some details later on in the video as to why I installed this. Um, that's kind of Mustang specific, but let me take you over to the bench and I'll show you exactly what we're going to be installing here. All right, so these are all the parts that we're gonna be installing in this video. So starting back at the back, this is a Mishimoto 19 row dual pass oil cooler. What that means is the, the oil actually goes across the cooler twice. There's a divider in between this inlet and outlet down here. So the, the oil goes down the cooler, through the uh, end tank, and then back down the opposite side. In addition to the, uh, the oil cooler, Mishimoto also gives you all this miscellaneous hardware over here because this is a universal oil cooler. This does not spe fit any specific application. So you have to make it work with basically what you got. So to get oil to the cooler, I'm using a sandwich adapter from Mishimoto. Uh, this is a thermostatic oil filter adapter. So what that means is this is only gonna send oil to the cooler when the oil is above 185 degrees. So below 185 degrees, the thermostat is in bypass and the oil is going to bypass the cooler. So to tie the cooler to the oil filter adapter, I'm using PTFE-10 AN line. Um, I'm actually gonna make a separate upload on how to assemble the uh, PTFE AN line. I'll put a card in the corner, link in the description when that video comes out. Um, but like I said, that's what's going to tie the oil filter adapter to the cooler. Uh, this smaller cooler over here that you see on the far right, this is actually a power steering cooler. So the power steering cooler on this car, first of all, it's rather large and it's rather inefficient because the stock cooler does not have any fins on it like this cooler does. So this one's much smaller and will cool much better than the stock setup. So with that, let's go over to the car, pull the front fascia off and start looking at where we can fit this stuff underneath the front bumper. All right, so now that I've got the front of this thing all tore apart, you could kind of see um, what we're dealing with here. So there's obviously a big like crash support that goes across, you know, from this frame rail to that frame rail. So this whole space across here is, is pretty much blocked. Um, the other thing you can see is the factory 
power steering cooler takes up a ton of space. So that's part of the reason why I'm going to that more efficient fin style cooler is I can reduce the size of this cooler by probably 60% and it's actually gonna cool better than you know just this loop of tubing. Um, so I have all sorts of options where I can mount this cooler. Obviously, you know, I can put it anywhere in here. Um, on some vehicles, you could even put it out here to the outside, um, you know, like just above a fog light or something like that. But the thing that you have to remember is you have to remember airflow. You know, this cooler, I don't care how big the cooler is, if you don't put any air through it, it's not gonna work. So yeah, I could put the cooler over here and plumb it in real easy but there's no airflow over here. So unless I have a fan, it's not gonna do me one bit of good because there's no air going through the cooler anyway. Um, the other thing is, even if you do have a fan, the air that goes through the cooler has to have somewhere to go. So just because you put a cooler over here with a fan on it, doesn't mean it's gonna cool worth a darn because like I said, once the air goes through the cooler, it has to have somewhere to go. So that's why if you look at a lot of uh, European vehicles, the, the inner splash shield in here is actually like louvered. They actually cut vents into the inner splash shield. So if they mount a cooler in here, that air from the cooler goes right in toward the wheel. So they can utilize this space for cooling. I don't have that luxury here. So my oil cooler, my power steering cooler has to go somewhere up here in the front. So first and foremost, this factory power steering cooler, I'm gonna replace it like I said a second ago. Um, this is the one that's going in here. And as you can see, this one having fins on it, it's gonna dissipate heat a lot better than you know just this tube is ever going to. Um, in addition to that, it's also gonna be a little bit lighter, which is good. And the other thing is it's gonna save me a ton of space, which as you'll see in a second, I desperately need. So this is the cooler. Now, took the bolt out of the power steering cooler and just set that out of the way. Now the oil cooler is gonna sit in here. I'm thinking something like this, but looking at this, Ford has a rod that runs from the core support to the bottom of the hood latch to help support the hood latch. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remake this piece out of thicker material, a little bit wider material, and then I'm gonna use that to hold the cooler in place. Over here on the far side, I'm gonna take a strip of metal and basically do the same thing. Tie the bottom of the core support to the top of the core support, bolt the oil cooler to that. Hopefully that should give me enough room that I can put the power steering cooler off to the side like this and they should fit something like that. So this by far was the most time consuming thing about this whole install. Um, building these brackets, figuring out where the coolers were gonna go was like I said, by far the most time consuming part of this whole thing. And there's a couple different ways around this. So first of all, you have to remember I bought a universal cooler with a universal adapter. I'm making my own hoses. I'm making my own brackets to make all this stuff work. I could have went out and paid 60% more and I could have got something pre-made with the brackets, with the correct length hoses, the correct adapter, everything would have just bolted on to this specific car if I bought a specific kit. But because I went with a universal oil cooler with universal parts, I have to make it work. So you either spend your money on vehicle specific kits or you spend your time on making universal stuff work. So I'm pretty cheap, I'm not gonna lie. So I'd rather spend my time rather than my money. So that was the route that I went. So we've got the oil cooler all set up up front. Next thing we gotta do is get the oil filter adapter in between the oil filter and the engine block. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the oil filter. And as you would imagine, the adapter goes between the oil filter and the engine block. So pull your, uh, pull your filter off of here. If you need to change your oil, this is an excellent time to do it.
Now the oil filter adapter is going to go on there something like this. So the, the side with the O-ring is going to go toward the engine block. So this is going to sit in here just like this. Now you need to get these, you need to get your ports for your AN fittings in some sort of location that you can get hoses to them. So if you want to come straight up, straight down, you need to be able to access those, those ports. So keep that in mind. Now to lock this thing in place, you're gonna take this sleeve out of the kit and that's literally gonna thread on the existing stud on the engine block and you're gonna tighten that up with a wrench. Once you have that on, you're then gonna take your oil filter and the oil filter then threads onto this, just like this. All right, so I got my lines installed to both my coolers here. Um, the AN lines that I'm using, these are PTFE AN fittings, dash 10. Uh, it's got dash 10 fittings on the cooler and dash 10 fittings on the adapter. So the hoses run around this side, around in, in the, past this like air deflector, and you come up underneath here, and you got one here, and another one right here just above it. So both those go to the oil filter adapter, and like I said, that oil filter adapter is actually thermostatic, so it's really only sending oil to the cooler only when the oil's above 185 degrees. So with that, let's fire this thing up, check it for leaks. So I did a couple extra things before I actually started the vehicle up. First of which was I flushed the cooler and the lines with fresh engine oil just to make sure that there was no garbage in the lines or in the cooler from the manufacturing process. Um, the next thing I did was I actually filled the cooler with about three quarters of a quart worth of oil. So when that thermostat opens, the engine isn't going to go without oil until the cooler fills up. It's going to have oil in it the whole time. Now, when you're going through here and checking for leaks, it's absolutely 100% imperative that you have zero leaks with these connections, with these fittings, and with the cooler. Because the issue is, oil goes through these lines and through this cooler extremely quickly. Um, if you guys have ever double gasketed an oil filter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. An engine that is running with a major oil leak will empty the entire sump in about five seconds. So you need to be very on top of the state of all these lines, make sure that they are not leaking and constantly, you know, you need to have your eyeballs on all this stuff to just make sure you don't have any leaks developing. So one other thing I forgot to mention about the oil filter adapter is it has ports in it for aftermarket gauges. So you can hook up temperature gauges, pressure gauges, whatever you want so you can get all your oil pressure and temperature information. So in the case of this Mustang down here in the corner is the oil pressure gauge. The oil pressure gauge in this car is literally an idiot light. So this car doesn't have an oil pressure gauge. It's literally just a switch, an on-off switch that turns on at 6 PSI. So if the car has more than 6 PSI of oil pressure, this gauge goes to the middle. If it's less than 6 PSI, it goes all the way to the bottom. So because I have ports on this adapter, I can actually run an actual oil pressure gauge. So up here at the top, that is my current running oil pressure, 76 PSI. So I have full temperature information, oil pressure information, because of the adapter that I'm using. So some of you may be wondering about this spiral wrap I have on the AN line. Um, this stuff is actually used in hydraulics and it's literally made for abrasion to keep the lines from you know being abraded through. Um, I wasn't too concerned with how these lines look because it's gonna be you know, inside the fender, back behind the bumper. This stuff's never really gonna be seen. So yes, there's a lot of other things I could do to make this look neater, but my main concern is durability and abrasion basically. 
So I'll link this stuff down in the description. Um, like I said, they use it on like excavators and tractors and you know, stuff that's subjected to super harsh environments. Um, and it really, really holds up. So like I said, I'll link it down in the description if you guys are interested in that. All right guys, so how does this cooler perform on this car? So at this point, I've only put about 25 miles on the car. I did some light cruising with it, you know, between 25 and 55 miles an hour. And I have some initial impressions and so far I'm pretty impressed. So the temperatures that I was seeing at, you know, those pretty much slow speeds was uh, the oil coming out of the oil pan going into the oil cooler was about 180 degrees and the oil coming out of the oil cooler that was going into the engine was about 30 to 40 degrees cooler than the inlet. So overall it's doing its job, but like I said, I don't have any extended like highway driving to know um, how this thing's ultimately gonna perform. The other thing you have to remember here is I'm really only drawing air from the bottom down here. Um, you know, the top of this is the air that's going into the radiator and the AC condenser. And the crash support on the front of this car is actually blocking probably a little more than a third of the cooler. So with just over half of the cooler functioning, if you will, I'm getting a 40 degree temperature drop on my oil. So had I placed this in a better spot that had more airflow, like if I mounted it sticking out of the freaking hood or something where it had tons and tons of airflow, I would probably see even a greater drop than the 40 degrees that I saw. But like we kind of went over when I was putting this thing together, I'm kind of packaging limited as far as uh, airflow on this thing. So why did I go through all this rigmarole to install this oil cooler on this virtually stock engine Mustang? Um, so I did some research before I decided whether or not I was gonna do this. And one of the things I came across, I actually came across a podcast with Paul Rossi. If any of you guys know who Paul Rossi is, he is an EMSA racer, a drag racer. And the podcast I came across, he was actually doing development work for Ford on the 93 Cobra R. Ford sent him a mule car to basically do suspension chassis tuning with to figure out what springs, what shocks, what sway bars they wanted to run on that car to get it to handle the way they wanted it to handle. So Paul took the car out to Willow Springs and started lapping the car and he found out that that car would only do about two laps before it overheated. Um, to basically, to make a long story short, because of Paul's findings, they put a larger radiator in those cars and an external air to oil oil cooler like what I installed here. And every single Cobra R, 93, 95, and 2000 had a factory air to oil oil cooler so they didn't overheat. So that was kind of the reason that I went that route on this car. And the reason I did that is this is the first time I'm gonna say this on camera. This car is gonna be driven from Akron, Ohio, all the way out to California to go to Laguna Seca for a track day for my honeymoon, and then driven back. So it's 2,500 miles each way with a track day in between. Um, so as you can imagine, I cannot have any cooling issues. Um, I'm gonna be going through you know, hot areas, I'm going through Vegas, I'm gonna go through high elevations, things like that. So it just made sense for me to, you know, do this mod to this car just to ensure that I had absolutely zero problems. So guys, I'll have links down in the description to the oil cooler, to the lines, uh, to the adapter, to the gauge that I have inside the car. And uh, as always guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you wanna see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. Mm -hmm.